Good morning, class. Sorry I'm late. Cool. I guess I can just get started immediately since there's already um, 20 of you. So I, I have a pretty quick lesson today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Why are, why are you... Oh, you're trying to get a PS5. Just wait, man. It's not going to happen. Just wait. You know, it's, you know, it's really pissing me off about um, a lot of things recently is that there are these side markets developing, you know, like um, people are buying up all of the stock of a product and then selling it on eBay for a profit. And it's like, I think it's just really rotten. Um You know, same thing is happening with graphics cards and things of that nature. I almost think there needs to be a, a law to address this. You know, because uh, these people who are, are buying it up and selling it aren't really adding any value, right? It's just pure exploitation. Um, so, I don't know. All right. So um, let me just do a quick, let me just do a quick um, uh, review of, hang on, I'm reading the chat because it's interesting, yeah, um, for what we've learned so far. about uh, rotational dynamics. Um, so yeah, I'm reading the, I, I don't think bots should be criminalized, but I think that like selling a product above its manufacturing, you know what MSRP is, like manufacturer suggested retail price. I think that selling something above its manufacturer suggested retail price should be um, should be illegal for like the first six months of a product being in, in existence, because um, to give to give supply a chance to catch up with demand you know, you know what I mean because these people who are buying up all the stock they're not adding value it's it's just it's pure exploitation um, so that might take away some of that incentive to um, profit off of it okay so the first thing we learned about rotational dynamics was the idea of torque which is a twisting force, and torque is is equal to F perp times R. Then we learned about rotational inertia, which is denoted by I, and it is equal to the sum of mR squared. Okay, so rotational inertia was how difficult it is to rotate something. Then we had rotational kinematics. We learned about rotational kinematics. Um, and so we learned three equations that were analogous to um, the three kinematics equations, the linear kinematics equations, which were delta theta equals omega naught t plus one half 
alpha t squared. Then we had omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. And then we had omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. So 1, 2, 3. These are three equations that are completely analogous. Um, To, to the equations of linear kinematics. So just to remind you what each of these variables means, uh, delta theta is the angular displacement. Omega is the angular velocity. And alpha is the angular acceleration. Um, Okay, and um, this is the only place in the course where we use radians. So these are measured in um, radians, radians per second, radians per second squared. Okay. Um, we also learned that there is an analogy between um, linear and rotational motion. Okay, and um, <clears throat> uh, so we learned that torque is basically a rotational version of force. We learn we learned that um, rotational inertia is a rotational version of mass. Okay, and we learned that um, each of these angular quantities is analogous to its linear counterpart. Okay, so uh, that's what we've learned so far. Today's lesson, it's going to be a short lesson. It's about Newton's second law for rotations. And this law applies to rigid bodies only. So um, if you recall, a rigid body is an object that doesn't flex, OK? So no flexing. So this calculator could be considered a rigid body. So Newton's second law for rotation would apply to it. If you have something like a bucket of water, the water is not solid. It's not a rigid body. Um, gases. Newton's second law for rotation wouldn't apply to gases. Or things that are rubbery, you know, that flex a lot. Those, even though it's kind of a solid, it doesn't um, apply. Okay? And so we're going to we're gonna have this based on, um, by analogy. Okay? So the linear form of Newton's second law is net force equals m a. All right. So by using the analogy between linear and rotational motion, type it into the chat if you can guess the rotational form of Newton's second law. Okay. I will wait. And while I'm waiting, I will read the chat.
Okay, no one is typing it in. So I will give I will give the answer, I guess. Oh. Um so it is it is. So the analog of force is torque. So we have net torque. The analog of mass is inertia. So we have inertia. And then the analog of um, linear acceleration is angular acceleration. So this is Newton's second law for rotation. Net torque equals I times alpha. Um, so now that we know Newton's second law for rotations, we can explain uh, why we are using radians. The reason that we are using radians is because this equation is true only if the alpha is measured in radians per second squared. So this equation automatically spits out alpha in units of radians per second squared. Okay? Um, it wouldn't take this simple form. There would be an extra factor multiplying everything. So um, if we didn't use radians per second squared, so for example, if we used degrees per second squared or revolutions per second squared. Um, and so that is the reason why we have been using radians. So now the question is, does your calculator need to be in radians mode? And the answer is no. You should put it in degree mode. Okay? And here's the reason why. The only time it matters whether you're in radian mode or degree mode is when you are taking the sine or the cosine of an angle. Okay? Um, so because I'm not having you, for example, take the sine of the angular displacement, it doesn't matter if you're in radians or degree mode because you're not taking the sine of... of of this angular displacement, okay? If I had asked you what was the cosine of the angular displacement, then you would need to be careful about what are the units of delta theta, okay? Um, so what you can do is you can literally just put it in degree mode and forget about it. Even though your answers, whenever you're doing Newton's second law, are going to be in radians. Okay, so if that's confusing to you, if it doesn't make sense to you, just put it in degree mode and forget about it. Okay, all right, so we're going to do one example today, and it's going to take a while, and it, and it shows everything we need to know up to this point about rotational dynamics. Um, so this example, it's an asymmetric dumbbell in space. Okay, so the fact that it's in space means that there's no gravitational torque. Okay, um, so it's an asymmetrical dumbbell, kind of looks like this. And it's pivoting about this point. This point is not in the middle of the dumbbell. Um, so we've got a 4 kilogram mass over here. And we've got a 2 kilogram mass over here. And the 4 kilogram mass is, um, is 0 0.5 meters from the pivot. And the 2 kilogram mass is... 0 0.3 meters from the pivot. Okay. Um, there is a 200 Newton force acting 
at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal on that four kilogram mass. And then there is a 300 Newton force right here acting 20 degrees um, away from the vertical, okay? And so the question is, how fast is it spinning um, after it has rotated 10 times? Okay, so we're going to do this problem in steps. We're going to use four steps. The first step is going to be to calculate the net torque. Okay, the second step is going to be to calculate the rotational inertia. The third step is going to be to calculate alpha, the angular acceleration. Okay, and then the final step is going to be to do, oops, can't even see that, do angular kinematics. Okay, now step three. This is the point where we will use Newton's second law for rotations. Now, why is that? It is because you can see that Newton's second law for rotations has alpha in it. If we want to calculate alpha, we need to know the net torque and the inertia. So that is why we first calculate the net torque and the inertia, and then we calculate alpha, and then we go from there. Okay? So um, there's a right torque and there's a left torque. So type it into the chat if you know what is the sign of the of the right torque and what is the sign of the left torque, positive or negative. And I will wait. I uh, had some Chinese food last night. It was amazing. I overate, um, and I think it had a lot of MSG in it, which I don't have any problem with. I like MSG, but um, I like woke up in the middle of the night and I was just, I drank so much water. Like MSG makes you thirsty. I just woke up in the middle of the night and I was just. <gasps> Come on, people. All right. Uh, it was from a place called, I think it's like, my friend ordered it. I think it's called like Piggy Noodle, Piggy Noodles or something, Piggy Dumplings. It's by right by Mount Sac. Um, so excellent. They are both positive um, torques. So I'm going to have plus something times something plus something times something. So what are these somethings? Well, this is F perp and this is R. This is F perp and this is R. Okay. So for this torque right here, it's acting 0 0.5 meters from the pivot, so I have 0 0.5. This torque is acting 0 0.3 from the pivot, so I have 0 0.3. Um, and so now, notice how this dumbbell is horizontal. So to get F perp, I have to get the vertical component. Okay. Um, so for the force on the right, what is the trig function I'm going to use to get the vertical component? And same question for the left force. How do I 
how do I get the vertical component of each of these because those are the perpendicular. So I'm going to have 200 times a trig function of 30 degrees and then I'm going to have 300 times a trig function of 20 degrees. Uh, so sine is correct for the right force. Why? Because um, uh, it's going to be sine for the right one because I want the vertical component. The vertical component is opposite this angle. Okay, opposite the angle. Uh, that's the sine function, so I have sine of 30 degrees, 200 sine of 30 degrees. Here, um, notice how the angle is in a different spot. See how here the angle is in, a, uh, in the lower left-hand corner of the triangle, but here it's not in the lower left-hand corner of the triangle, okay? So I want the vertical component, and I can see that it's right next to the angle. It's adjacent to the angle. The vertical side of this triangle is adjacent to the angle, so that is cosine for the other one. Okay, so um, th this is a so don't get fixated on sine is vertical, cosine is horizontal, or something like that. Okay, what you always always want to do is you want to look at where is my angle, and where is the side of the triangle that I want compared to that angle. Okay. This is the side of the triangle I want. This is the angle. They're opposite each other, so that means it has to be sine. Here, this is the, this, the side of the triangle I want. Here's the angle. The side is adjacent to the angle, so I want to use cosine. Okay? So, uh, so yeah. All right. Let me uh, compute the net torque here. And I get about a net torque of about positive 135 newton meters. Okay. Um, now I calculate the rotational inertia. So formula for rotational inertia is sum over m r squared. And I have uh, two masses, two sides to the dumbbell. So there's going to be a four kilogram mass that is 0.5 meters from the pivot. And then I have a two kilogram mass that's 0 0.3 meters from the pivot. So we got m r squared, m r squared. Because of course sigma means sum. S-U-M sum, not S-O-M-E sum. So doing that, calculator, I get uh, a rotational inertia of 1.18 kilogram meters squared. Okay, so now we calculate alpha. So that is the part where Newton's second law for rotations comes in. So we have net torque equals I times alpha. And then if we divide both sides by rotational inertia, we get alpha equals net torque over I. Okay, so that's why we needed to do steps one and two first before we could get alpha. Uh, we could have done step two before step one, um, but we can't do step three before steps one and two because we, we need to use Newton's second law for rotation. So we have net torque over inertia, which gives um, 135 over 1.18, um, which gives uh, 114 radians per second squared is the um, angular acceleration. 
by the way, notice how um, this angle, the angle that I took the sine of and the angle that I took the cosine of, those were in degrees. So that is why my calculator had to be in degree mode. Okay? Because the angle that I actually took the sine of is in degrees. Um, but now using Newton's second law for rotations, I'm back to radians. Okay? So I did not change my calculator away from degree mode. It was always in degree mode. Um, all right, so now we do angular kinematics. So we want to know how fast is it spinning after it is rotated 10 times. And by the way, this starts at rest. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, and I'm implicitly assuming, I didn't say this, explicitly, but I guess I might as well say it now, that these torques are remaining constant. Because in order to apply the equations of angular kinematics, alpha has to be constant. And I can see that for alpha to be constant, the net torque has to be constant. Okay? So these torques have to be maintaining their values while this thing spins. Um, so if it starts at rest, Omega initial is zero. We're trying to calculate omega final. Uh, the alpha is 114 radians per second squared. And then delta theta is, uh, it says it rotated 10 times. But delta theta needs to be in radians. So what is 10 rotations in radians? Type it in, in the chat if you know. Twenty pi. Yes. So Remember, one rotation is 2 pi radians. Okay, so 10 rotations would be 10 times that, which is 20 pi radians. Okay, so these are the um, bits of information that we have. Okay, and so based on that, what is the trig function? that I'm going, or what is, sorry, not trig function, but what is the um, kinematic equation that I'm going to use? One, two, or three. Waiting for someone to type it in, please. Did you know I hit 300 subscribers yesterday? On my way to that Google Play button, or that YouTube Play button mailed to me. All right, no one wants to type it in. Okay, fine. Um, so the correct equation is equation three. So I'm going to use equation 3, which is omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. Omega final I'm trying to solve for, so I leave it as a variable. Omega initial is 0. Alpha is 114. And delta theta is 20 pi. So multiplying all that out, I get about 14,325 
is omega final squared. Take the square root of that. And I get omega final is 119, about 120 radians per second. So it's spinning quite fast. So remember, one full, one full rotation is 2 pi radians. So that's approximately 6. So this is about 20 complete rotations per second at that moment. All right. So uh, that is my lesson for today. I hope it made sense. And I will see you in the Zoom room. Bye for now.